Imagine standing on solid ground and feeling it breathe beneath your feet. In the Bay of Naples, the water isn't just rippling anymore, it's boiling. Bubbles explode through the surface in violent clusters, transforming calm blue waters into a churning cauldron of warning signs. This isn't some distant geological curiosity. This is one of the most dangerous volcanic systems on Earth. And after centuries of silence, it's speaking again. The question isn't if Campi Flagrai will erupt, it's when. And the clock may be running out faster than anyone imagined. The fishermen noticed it first. Patches of greenish water spreading across the bay like oil slicks. But this wasn't pollution. The water temperature spiked. Marine life began avoiding entire sections of the coastline. Then came the bubbles. Not the gentle fizz of carbonation, but violent bursts, shooting upward with enough force to disturb boats anchored hundreds of meters away. Scientists rushed to the scene with instruments in hand and what they discovered sent chills through the geological community. The gas escaping from beneath the seafloor wasn't ordinary carbon dioxide. Mixed within those bubbles was something far more ominous, helium-3, a rare isotope that exists in only one place on Earth's surface. The deep mantle where magma chambers lurk in the darkness. But the bubbles were just the beginning. Across the region known as Campi Flagre, the Flagrean Fields, a symphony of alarm bells started ringing simultaneously. The ground itself was moving, rising like the chest of a sleeping giant, taking its first conscious breath in half a millennium. Campi Flegre isn't a mountain. It's something far more dangerous, a supervolcano hiding in plain sight. Picture a massive bowl-shaped depression, 24 kilometers across, formed when the land collapsed into an emptied magma chamber. During a catastrophic eruption, 40,000 years ago, that eruption was so powerful, it plunged Europe into volcanic. Winter and May have pushed humanity to the brink of extinction. Today, half a million people live directly inside this ancient caldera. The city of Naples, with its three million residents, sits just beyond the rim. These aren't rural communities that can be evacuated quickly. This is one of the most densely populated regions in Europe, built on top of a geological time bomb. The system works like this. Deep beneath the surface, approximately 8 kilometers down, lies a massive reservoir of molten rock. As pressure builds, magma pushes upward through fractures in the Earth's crust. The ground above responds by rising, sometimes by centimeters, sometimes by meters. The Italians have a word for this phenomenon, bradyseism, the slow breathing of the earth. But lately the breathing has become more rapid, more erratic. Since 2005, the ground in the town of Pozzuoli has risen by over four meters. Imagine your house, your street, your entire neighborhood lifted higher than a basketball, hoop, buildings crack, foundations shift, the earth itself becomes unstable beneath civilization's weight. Then came the earthquakes, not just tremors, but swarms of them, clustering together like a warning alarm that won't stop sounding. In the first week of monitoring alone, seismographs recorded over 135 distinct seismic events. Some were minor, barely perceptible to residents going about their daily lives, Others jolted people from their sleep, sent pictures crashing from walls, and reminded everyone that the ground they trust is anything but solid. Each earthquake tells a story. The shallow ones, occurring just two to three kilometers beneath the surface, indicate magma, pushing through the crust, fracturing rock, forcing its way upward. The pattern mirrors historical data from volcanic systems on the verge of eruption, increased frequency, shallow depth, clustered location. The helium-3 readings grew more alarming. This isotope doesn't lie. 
Its presence in surface gases means fresh magma is rising from the deep mantle, bringing with it the potential for catastrophic release. Monitoring stations detected concentration spikes unlike anything seen in decades of observation. Ground deformation accelerated. GPS stations measured uplift rates that suggested the magma chamber was not just active, but expanding, inflating like a balloon, being filled with gas. The inflation wasn't uniform either. Certain areas rose faster than others, creating stress points where the crust might fracture completely. Temperature anomalies appeared across the region. Fumaroles, volcanic vents releasing steam and gas, grew hotter. New ones opened where none existed before. The earth was venting pressure, trying to release the building tension without catastrophic failure. But would it be enough? History haunts Campi Flegre. The last eruption occurred in 1538, and the parallels to today's situation are impossible to ignore. That year, residents reported the same warning signs, ground uplift, earthquake swarms, changes in local springs and fumaroles. They watched the land rise, felt the tremors increase, and then Monte Nuovo, New Mountain, was born. In just 48 hours, an eruption built a cinder cone over 120 meters tall. Volcanic bombs, chunks of molten rock the size of houses, were hurled kilometers through the air. Pyroclastic flows, superheated avalanches of gas and rock, traveling at hundreds of kilometers per hour, swept across the landscape, incinerating everything in their path. The explosive force reshaped the entire bay. But here's the terrifying part. That was considered a relatively small eruption for Campi Flagre. The system is capable of far worse. The deposits beneath the region tell stories of eruptions so massive they ejected cubic kilometers of material into the atmosphere, altered global climate, and left ash deposits across the Mediterranean and beyond. Scientists study these ancient layers like archaeologists reading the Earth's diary. Each strata represents a chapter of catastrophe. The Campanian Ignimbrite eruption 40,000 years ago, the Neapolitan Yellow Tuff eruption 15,000 years ago, these weren't volcanic events. They were planetary scale disasters that redefined landscapes and climates. The question haunting every volcanologist monitoring Campi Flegrai today is simple but horrifying. Which type of eruption comes next? A relatively contained event like 1538, devastating but survivable? Or something that rewrites geology textbooks and emergency response plans simultaneously? The Italian National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology runs a monitoring network that would seem like science fiction a generation ago. Seismometers track every vibration in the Earth's crust. GPS stations measure ground movement down to millimeters. Gas analyzers sample the chemical composition of emissions in real time. Thermal cameras watch for temperature changes, invisible to the human eye. This data feeds into sophisticated computer models, attempting to predict what the magma chamber will do next. But prediction isn't certainty. Volcanic systems are chaotic, influenced by countless variables interacting in ways that defy simple forecasting. One fissure opening in the wrong place could trigger a cascade of events. One pressure release valve closing could trap gases until explosive failure. The scientists face an impossible dilemma. Sound the alarm too early, evacuate half a million people unnecessarily, and face political and economic consequences that could paralyze future response efforts. Wait too long, prioritize certainty over caution, and risk catastrophe on an unimaginable scale. They establish alert levels, color-coded systems meant to communicate risk to the public and authorities. Green means normal background activity. Yellow indicates changes requiring enhanced monitoring. 
Orange signals, significant alterations with possible precursors to eruption. Red means eruption is imminent or underway. Currently, Campi Flagre sits at yellow, edging toward orange with each new data point that arrives. The trend lines all point in the same direction, upward, intensifying, accelerating. In Pozzuoli, daily life continues with surreal normalcy. Children walk to schools, built on ground that rises measurably each year. Businesses open in buildings marked with structural cracks that deepen with each earthquake. Residents have lived with this threat for generations, but the recent escalation has changed the atmosphere. Evacuation plans exist on paper, theoretical routes, and staging areas that assume orderly movement and adequate warning time. The reality would be chaos. Narrow streets clogged with vehicles, panicked crowds, limited routes out of the danger zone. Emergency services run drills, but everyone knows that plans rarely survive contact with volcanic reality. Some residents have left, unwilling to gamble on geological timelines. Others stay, bound by economics, family ties, or simple refusal to abandon homes their ancestors built centuries ago. They watch the monitoring data, feel each tremor, and wonder if today might be the day the earth finally breaks. Tourism continues, though visitors now come as much for the geological drama as the historical sites. They photograph the bubbling waters, visit observation points where uplift is visible, and perhaps don't fully grasp that they're standing inside one of Earth's most dangerous volcanic systems. The bubbles still rise through the Bay of Naples. The earthquakes continue their restless rhythm. The ground pushes upward, millimeter by millimeter, toward some unknown threshold. Campi Flegre is awakening, but awakening on geological time means the climax could come tomorrow or decades from now. What we know is this. The warning signs are real, the danger is present, and the system is more active now than at any point since 1538. The data tells a clear story, but the ending remains unwritten. Half a million people sleep above a supervolcano that's showing every sign of stirring from its slumber. Scientists watch, instruments measure, and the world waits to see whether this awakening ends with a whimper or a roar that echoes across continents. The Earth is speaking. We should listen.